Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Larry Mittenall, your friendly neighborhood child, adolescent, and adult psychiatrist. Um, where we're here to talk about what's on your mind to help you or help people in your family and your children thrive. So I appreciate all of the comments that you send. And today's video is actually an answer to Alex G, who said the following, I will be applying to psych residency programs this year. Pause. I am so excited that you're doing that because we need more, we need more uh, light and people like you. So thank you for doing that. Um, and so I was wondering if you could do a video on what it takes to become a competitive uh, for psychiatry residency. So Alex, you are not alone in asking this question. So um, here, we'll take some time to unpack my thoughts on what it takes to be really competitive in the field of psychiatry and for those who are early in the process, um, you know, perhaps high school, college, or just a curious person, I'll spend a little time talking about um, how you get to be where Alex is and then what happens next to becoming a psychiatrist. So first, your question of the episode, and this is a little bit of neuroscience for you. So one, can you name the psychiatrist who was senior advisor to a little known show called Sesame Street? Okay, maybe not so little of a show, but you know what I mean. Um, now, I want you to resist the urge to Google it. Put your guesses in the comments below to hear more about this psychiatry luminary um, at the end of our talk together today. And of course, before I tell you how to get to Sesame Street or a great psychiatry residency, don't forget to smash the like button. Um, you know, harder than Oscar the Grouch's trash can lid. I mean, that, that's how hard I want you to smash it. All right, now let's get into it. Now, for those who are watching who aren't medical students applying for residency, um, here is what the journey looks like. I mean, it's pretty arduous. In the United States, you study really, really hard through you know, elementary, middle, and high school, so that's 12 years. You then attend a college or university, which is another four years. Uh, many major in the sciences, but you certainly don't have to. Um, but uh, there's an exam that you take called the MCAT, which is, stands for the Medical College Admissions Test. Your performance on that test really helps your competitiveness for medical school in addition to some of the extracurriculars you do, uh, recommendations that you get, your academic record, so on and so forth. You work really hard in those 16 years to get good grades and test scores. However, the common wisdom is that, you know, grades really aren't enough on its own. And so without other interests or experiences that demonstrate, you know, some humanitarian qualities or special interests, all those things can really add up. And so my med school class had, um, for instance, you know, former you know, professionals, a professional guitar player, uh, people with, you know, PhDs in, in different fields. Now, you don't need all those things to have a great experience um, or to be included, but, um, but it just comes to show, and that's just basically an example of how different the paths can be of people who get into medical school. So. Uh, so that's where the brilliant Alex G is. She has worked really hard and is in uh, the company of some high achieving classmates who want to practice in their chosen field. All right, so again, how much time does this take all together in summary? So again, 13 years through kind of, you know, elementary to high school graduation, undergraduate four years, medical school four years, and then residency. So residency for psychiatry is three to four years, um, depending on if you take an expedited track, and then there's fellowship um, if you do something else like I did child and adolescent psychiatry. So that's, for some people, approximately 26 years of education. And then if you choose to do um, and extra, you know, experiences such as research or other training, it's a really big investment of time. And so, um, and so it certainly is um, of great interest to medical students to be really, really competitive to get the spot that they want um, so that they can uh, train in the area that they're really excited about. So let's get into some of the nuts and bolts of uh, some of those things that are important to consider um, in making yourself um, a competitive applicant. So QRST. That is uh, the acronym that I use to help me remember some of the core things that I think are go into making someone a competitive applicant. And that Q refers to the quality of the personal statement. R are the recommendations uh, that you might get from others. Um, S are the scores that, that you um, achieve through uh, medical school. T um, it for me is try. So trying to do something of interest that you really like, um, but that also might be a differentiator that helps set you apart. I think these four things are 
very much kind of the pillars of what many programs are looking at as some of their top factors for evaluating candidates. And so those who aren't in medical school, um, let me just uh, explain that, you know, during your, in addition to the exams that you take for pharmacology or cardiology, um, these are things that have a grade associated with them. And then you may also do clinicals as well, where you get grades for how you do in the rotation. But then along the way, you're also taking the U.S. Uh, medical licensing exam. We call them the USMLE, which is broken up in steps. So we call them step one, step two, and step three. And so most um, U.S. medical school graduates have completed successfully the step one and step two exams. Um, and so those things are, are big and those are the scores that kind of compare you among other people in the nation who have also taken the exam. Now, letters of recommendation. So those are, those are highly important too because there are other people commenting on your clinical acumen or what you look like when you're making decisions and working within a team. And so during the rotations, you certainly wanna be aware of the connections that you're making uh, with your attending physicians. And that attendings are, that's the term referring to uh, a physician who's completed their training and is practicing independently um, in their chosen specialty. And often they're the teachers. And so um, this term is typically used at teaching facilities um, for credentialed physicians, so for those who aren't familiar with the term. And so uh, variety too in the letters that you get can be really helpful. So um, say for instance you are interested in doing child psychiatry, having a great recommendation from a pediatrician that says you're a rock star along with you know a psychiatrist or a child psychiatrist that you've worked with, I think those things go in tandem and can really help your application um, to look really good. Um, and so I often point out that you know um, that it's it's good to have kind of a, a mentor along the way. The other thing about um, having recommendations too is that I like to reduce friction, so I wanna make it easy for people to recommend me. And so if there are things that you need, like if certain programs require a, a physical letter rather than things being done electronically, then I'm gonna have a stamp, an envelope, all those things kind of laid out for them to make that process uh, seamless. So the personal statement. Um, having a really great personal statement is super important. Um, I probably went through seven or eight versions of my final one, um, and it was ripped to shreds, ripped to shreds by um, people that I love, uh, my wife who's um, in many ways a grammarian, um, just to be sure that it really kind of crystallized my love for the field of psychiatry and helped to really um, explore some of my interests and how I thought those things kind of fit together and, uh, and were a bearing for me. Okay, and then lastly, the T, um, trying to do something different. I mean, I think that's what allows people to know um, to know about you and, uh, and to access you and will be probably an anchor of the conversations that you have when you are invited to, uh, to interview with a particular program. So what can some of those activities look like? Well, some people may try to do rotations in the region or the program they wish to do residency, and that allows people to really get to know you, to, to see how you are at functioning as a team, maybe you get a chance to teach a little bit, but it almost serves as kind of a pre-interview for a really competitive program. And so I think that's another way that you can shine, both get a really good experience too, to solidify that that's really what you wanna do, but also um, perhaps get a leg in to a place that you really wanna be. So research, research experience can be really helpful. Um, a national review survey of program directors um, suggested that over 40% of certain programs were really interested in a person who wanted to do research or had a strong research background. And so obviously this means that you know the programs that are really heavy into research and have that as a strong component of their training program are really gonna look on that favorably. So that's something else that you could consider doing. Um, also joining leadership in a student organization and working on a meaningful project can really be helpful. Um, volunteering, of course, never gets old and can be helpful. Um, reprieve, actually, during medical school when you're spending those long nights studying. Being able to be among people and helping and serving in some way um, can really mean a lot. And then maybe lastly, another idea to go along with that T is, um, is another degree. And so uh, there are people who um, may be in programs or thinking about programs that offer a license or, um, or a second degree um, as well. So the most common ones are probably the master's in public health 
or um, the Masters in Business Administration. Um, and you know, often there are programs that even if you don't do the full course of study while you're also going to medical school, maybe that you do you do parts that allow you to have some um, licensure or some um, distinction too that goes goes along with your medical degree. Um, again, that helps you to stand out and uh, and may help you develop a skill that you hope to bring to your future career. All right guys, so that's my summary of the QRST. Some of you may have more questions based on those four areas um, or other things that you're wondering if they can be helpful. So don't forget to comment below and I'm happy to try to answer those things as they come up. Now, um, let me know if you found uh, some of these suggestions helpful, especially if you're watching this and uh, maybe you're an attending or a physician as well. Um, other people might be able to benefit from your advice too, so certainly don't be shy in the comments. And now to our question of the episode. Um, so you remember that the question was um, if you could name the psychiatrist um, who was a senior advisor to a little known show called uh, Sesame Street. Actually, it wasn't just Sesame Street, but Sesame Street's probably the one that, you, that you're most familiar with. All right, do you know? So the answer is Dr. Chester Pierce, the founding president of the Black Psychiatrists of America. Um, he was partly preoccupied with the influence that uh, modern life in the advent of the television was having on you know, child development. And so by 1969, virtually every American family home had at least one uh, television set. And so his, um, one of his many contributions to psychiatry was acting as a consultant for um, you know, the Children's uh, Network and, and Sesame Street. And so that's really cool, right? Um, so if you don't, um, if you don't know, and or you'd like to learn more about uh, Dr. Chester Pierce, you don't have to take my word for it. Um, check below where I have a link to a really cool article that talks a little bit more about his life uh, and his many contributions. My friends, you have been super great. Uh, thanks for watching with me. I want you to take good care and please be well.